check out this render. How many trees do you think there are in the background? A hundred thousand? Or maybe a million? A billion? Nope. There are zero tree instance in the background. All of these trees are fake. There are zero trees. So you might think that all of these trees were created using some kind of micro displacement, right? Nope, it's not micro displacement either. So you might be wondering how the hell did I create all of these trees without scattering any tree instance or using micro displacement? That, my friend, is the topic of today's video. So these trees were created using the same technique. The number of trees doesn't matter at all. You can have a thousand or a million or a billion or a trillion. The number of tree does not matter at all. Do you know why? Because all of these trees are fake. They are not real trees. They are a bunch of layers stacked together and render to something like this. And I will show you the process of creating this setup in a few minutes. So let's begin. First, let's get rid of all of these trees and we will start all over from the beginning. This is the landscape that I prepared, right? And this landscape has uh, some data in it already, the dirt, the wear, the convexity, the flow, just typical landscape stuff. So create a plane. We will call this plane tree scatter, okay? And we will create, no, not a material, create a new geometry node. Get rid of the input. And we will import the landscape using relative so that we can move the landscape later on if we need. And uh, now we can temporarily hide away the original landscape. And this material I accidentally created, let's just rename this to fake tree scatter. All right. Now, assign the material, fake tree scatter. There we go. We need to get rid of the rocky part and just keep the, the mesh where the trees will grow. Okay. And to do that, we will need to store a tree map attribute. Let's call it tree mask. There we go. And uh, first we can select the dirt layer, go to utility and scroll all the way down here. We have this select height and let's visualize this. Okay. We will select the height of the dirt. Okay. Apparently it's uh, too much. So let's set this to, let's say one by one, All right? Something like that and invert the, uh, the uh, mask and uh, maybe we should do something like that all right or another way you can do this is to use the map range node there we go and we can call in the uh, named attribute dirt okay and put it in here like so and we can use the map range to create the dirt mask the same way we use these uh, this select height node so anyway i'm just gonna leave it like that okay now I don't want the trees to grow on a very steep slope like this. So I will also get rid of the steep slope region using a uh, slope selection node. Okay. And invert the slope map, I mean mask, and uh, maybe spread it out a little more. Okay. Now we can multiply these together using a multiply math node. All right. This is the tree mask. However, I also want the amount of water to uh, affects the growth of the trees as well. So I'm gonna pull in the simulation data and uh, let's see the flow map. There we go. All right, and again, I will use the map range node, but this time I will invert the uh, output like so and uh, tweak these numbers a bit like that. And again, I will multiply this with the uh, tree mask to have to get something like this and uh, maybe just tweak it a little more like so now we can use the uh, tree mask to delete the unused part i mean the black part right there so to do that we must first read the tree mask as attribute there we go and use a compare node it's in the math section compare float and compare equals epsilon to zero so if the value is equal to zero then we will delete the face right so operation delete geometry delete faces and put this in here okay so now we have a very nice mesh for the trees to grow and we can always go back here to uh, tweak these numbers to uh, have the trees grow more or less in any case i'm just gonna leave everything as is for now all right now we will turn this into an instance using this geometry to instance node and uh, let's go to the spreadsheet and now all the uh, information 
is gone and we have this instance node okay next we will duplicate this instance by a number of times so we have this duplicate element node and duplicate the instance and you can set a number here but we need to reuse this number later on so instead of using the number right here we will create an input constant integer like that and let's set this to 16 so now we have 16 instances and they are kind of stacking together like that all right now we need a way to identify the instances and i want the first instance to carry at the number zero and the last instance to carry number one and everything in between will be the, the blend between zero and one so to do that first create a math node and subtract this integer by one and then divide this duplicate index with the uh, subtract here this one choose divide and uh, let's store the number i mean the attribute so store named attribute and store to the instance okay and let's call it f for factor all right and let's check out the numbers so you see the the first instance is zero and the second one is uh, 0 0.067 and the last one will be one and we can change this number to have a different number of instances but the the spread of values is always zero to one so let's set this back to 16. now we can use this uh, attribute for a lot of things for example how much we want to move the instances upward so let's do that next create a translate instance node and call in the uh, f attribute there we go and then use the uh, combine xyz node put this into the z dimension and put this into the translation so now all the instances are being moved upward by a maximum amount of one meter and if we want to move it more we can just put in a multiply node like that and increase this number for example eight that means all the 16 layers will be spread out in the in a distance of eight meters and let's change the number of instances you see anyway let's just uh, go back and change this to something like five meters okay we now have a nice bunch of layers and one final step before that let me turn back on the landscape so you see the lowest layer is being overlapped with the landscape which is very bad so i need to bring everything up by a little bit so that uh, the lowest layer does not overlap with the landscape and to do that simply move this instance right here up a little bit so go here and translate instance move this up by 0 0.01 meter it moved up just a tiny bit like that okay so we have something like this and this is the uh, geometry node setup i'm going to show you the nodes once more so that if you did something wrong you can figure it out by comparing your notes with my notes okay let's go ahead and switch to the shader editor and get rid of this the principal shader and we will replace that with a diffuse and a transparent mix these together like so and set this to something green to indicate the color of the trees okay now we need a voronoi texture like that let's visualize the voronoi and be sure to use 2d and depend on your landscape you might want to change the vector as well but in in this particular case i'm just going to use the uv so i will call in the uv map attribute there we go and put it in like so and let's increase the uh, number of trees so each of the cells here will be one tree all right so let's make the trees a little smaller anyway let's just make some big trees for now set this to 100 so that the trees are big and easy to see all right now we can just uh, flip the value like so so now at the center we have one and uh, the, the values get smaller towards the edge of the cells and uh, now let's call in the f attribute that we created earlier and be sure to change this type to instancer because this attribute is stored in the instances but not the geometry so you have to change this to instancer to get the values from the instances okay let me just uh, visualize to see if it's working all right you see it's working the, the lowest layer is black and the highest layer is white which is correct so now we can use a greater than node to uh, compare the two values this one and the factor and then we can use this as the factor of the mix and there we go we have some nice trees going on however 
you see it's it's not quite working that's because the number of transparency is set to something too low and we have too many layers of transparency so go to the render layer i mean the render tab and go all the way down here in the transparent under the light path section change this to something very high like 128 there we go and let's move out so you see we are now having an infinite amount of details and we can go here and tweak this to have even more details without any performance hit whatsoever because at the end of the day it's just one single mesh duplicated 16 times and since the 16 layers are referencing the same mesh so technically we only have like one single mesh to create all of these details now of course this is fake trees for the background only so if you zoom in too much or look at the thing from a low angle you can see they, they don't quite work but let's go all the way out you see it looks very nice and you can increase the quality of these trees by going back to the geometry nodes and increase the number of layers let's say 32 so now we have like 32 slices and the trees look much better but for the most case i find 16 to be enough 